Mr. Ian Strachan. Welcome along to my uh, brand new video podcast series. How are we doing today? I'm very good, thank you, Mark. Very good. How are you? I'm, uh, I couldn't be better. Um, uh, every week is a good week. Uh, you've got to start the week off in a, in a positive way. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely great from me. So let's get into it. Uh, a few very easy questions to start off with. Um, obviously, you're a business coach. You're a transformational business coach. What do you see as the role of a business coach? That's a really good question to start out with, is that? Um, a business coach is all sorts of different things, depending on what approach is at that moment in time. And I've, I've given a lot of thought to this. We often use the analogy of, you know, a, a sports person. You think of a, a highly successful sports person or a highly successful sports team. They generally wouldn't be successful without a coach. In fact, it's impossible to name a successful sports person that doesn't have a coach behind them. And in that regard, it seems fairly obvious what a coach is. But then when I kind of reflect back on it, we talk about business coaching and that you know, puts a different flavor to it. So now it brings business. It's, it's totally coaching the business, but we never are. You know, what business coaching really is, 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 is growing people. It's growing people so people can, can build their own business. And that's really what business coaching is. I, I find it now quite a misnomer, business coaching. It isn't business coaching, it's people coaching. But we put behind it all the structure and, and all the system that runs a business. But to, in order to run those systems and those procedures, the person needs to grow as well in order to make that really, really effective for them. So I actually consider myself a person coach who works in business, if that makes sense. We're in the same networking group, the Open Network, and it's a great collection of people. And often when you speak within the meeting, uh, you often mention um, being a transformational business coach. Now, should we tap, uh, let's tap into a little bit more of the transformational. How, how, how do you see the transformation part of it? Do you take it, do you take the business from what, point A to point B, or how, how, how are the different ways in which you uh, transform those businesses? Uh, again, what a brilliant question because it, that opens up that conversation, that same subject. You know, the transformation takes place in the business owner. The, the, the interval between our potential and our actual performance is the interference. And that interference is usually something we bring ourselves. So in terms of transformation, I like to, I like to get hold of a person and go, right, so, so this is the potential you've got. And everyone can recognize their own potential. Most people can recognize their own potential. That's the potential you've got. But this is the performance we're seeing today. And the difference between the two is that interference that's in the middle. So what do we need to do to start working on that interference? And sometimes that's a 20-minute conversation. And sometimes it's, it's a year's worth of coaching. But the transformation is actually, again, it's in changing that person. It's transforming, transforming that person from, well, I'm a bit stuck where I am now. I've plateaued. I can't get to the next stage to, hell, I can see what I can do next. And it's a simple step. It's a series of simple steps. And actually giving them that vision, but also empowering them, giving them the ability to give themselves permission. So many business owners need to give themselves permission to reach the edge of their comfort zone. And that's where the magic happens, not in the comfort zone, not outside the comfort zone, but just on the edge of the comfort zone, there's a little sweet spot where business grows and business owners grow. And I love, I love, the, comfort, I love the comfort zone idea because, you know, when you get to the edge of the comfort zone, you stretch your comfort zone a little bit. And when you stretch it, it's not elastic. It never goes back again. And that's the transformation. It's just taking some of his comfort zone and spreading it and spreading it and spreading it bigger and bigger and bigger until they can do whatever the hell it is that they decided they wanted to do in the first place. And that, for me, is transformation. I love that bit. Do you ever feel, uh, I know it's probably not the best business practice, but do you ever feel like kind of shaking the person in front of you and saying, look, let's come on, let's go. Let's let's change what you're doing. Let's change those um, procedures, what you've got in place, or you're, you're, you've been doing something for so many months or years and, and it's not really changing the outcome. So do you actually feel like getting in there and going, look, 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 please just change, transform yourself a little bit and it might help to get you to the end goal? Yeah, no, it's a great observation, and that's really living in my shoes, is that one, Mark? And there are, there are lots of moments like that. Now, as a coach, I have coaches myself. I have co three coaches I work with. I have a coach that works with me on my business. I have a coach that works with me on my coaching. I have a coach that works with me on my life. And at those moments when I'm speaking to a business owner, and it's like, why are we not seeing this? Why is it not happening? 
my coaches always come back to me and, and say, so, so what is it you're doing in? What's happening in your world that's actually, actually reflecting on what they're doing? Because that business owner may just be moving at their pace or that business owner may have a challenge of their own. At the end of the day, I'm my own first client. And that means that I have to spend much more time in self-reflection than my clients do. And I have to spend much more time in self-development than my clients do. Because what I take to them is a, is a, a refinement of everything that I expect them to do. We always, we always talk about perfection. You know, we, as, as coaches, we're talking about perfection in business. But in actual fact, all we're actually going to achieve is progression. So I've got my eye on what perfection is. What we're going to achieve on a weekly basis working with the business owner is, is progression. And it has to be progression in the right direction and progression towards that perfection. You're, you're a business coach and you try and get the best out of the business owner and the, and the actual business. What recommendations have you got for actual business coaching books for not only business, maybe self-development as well? I mean, there are so many great books out there. And you know, as you know, I've, I've recommended several before and you'll see on a LinkedIn feed. One of the greatest books in business I ever read, and, and it really changed my perspective as a mature business owner, was Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. And that was just a, it's just a brilliant readable book, a series of stories about businesses which have exceeded their peers by 15-fold over an extended period of time. Absolutely great book in terms of looking at the business. But as you've touched on already, I'm about transforming the person. So there are books that really, really resonate for me. Anything by Jim Rohn. And Jim Rohn's brilliant because yeah, there's, a, there's a, whole, um, a whole series in the book. But you can just dip into it. And you have to keep dipping into it. If you're not picking up a Jim Rohn book every three months and reading a chapter, then you're missing a whole, a whole raft of life that's, that's going to move you onwards. So Jim Rohn's absolutely superb. On the same vein, Stephen Covey. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I mean, it's in the title. It's Seven Habits. I mean, who's not going to want to get seven habits to be highly effective? Absolutely brilliant read again. So we've had a little bit of a torrid time over the last 18 months. Um, and videos really come to the fore, especially with Zoom networking events where people have been able to interact. It's obviously been the next best thing to face-to-face -face meetings, which are greatly um, coming back uh, for, for all of us now with all the restrictions being um, lifted. How important do you see video for you and your clients and how they can use it within their businesses to uh, communicate um, a little bit better? I don't think we can underestimate the power of video going forward. We're in a completely new age. It's not just that we moved to Zoom and became familiar with communicating over, over video. And there's so many more skills about communicating over video. Actually, where we stand in proportion to the screen, where we actually stand on the screen, um, these, these are things that we don't naturally understand and haven't been taught. So there's a whole load of skills that come with it. The great beauty is that what we've found, I think, in the last 18 months is that we, our reach is so much greater. All of a sudden, we're not localized. We can be as national or international as we want. And video then gives us that power to be a, they're instantly on demand wherever in the world we, we're, our, our audience is. That's massively powerful. Similarly, because now people's timescales get so compressed, time is so limited, that when I'm available to have a conversation doesn't necessarily coincide with when the client's available to have a conversation. So having material on demand in the background is so, so powerful. So increasingly in that regard, video is going to be important, but even more so in terms of getting our message out there, actually taking time to put together really approachable professional videos which aesthetically are pleasing and have quality and depth to them is just going to be so essential anybody can take a video on the on the phone now and throw something on the internet and it's going to get some traction so how do you do a video that stands up above that how do you make a video that is is not uh, not abusive to the eyes for want of a better phrase you know how do you make something which you actually want to sit there and you can easily absorb the content from that video. 
So for me, going forward, I mean, videos, it's, it's just going to be the way forward. We have to really embrace it. And by embrace it, I mean, take it and work it to its maximum. There's going to be more and more technology coming out. There's going to be better and, and more effective methods of communication within video. We really need to embrace that. And, and that's, you know, if we put something out on social media, that's the you know, simple thing is of, of, of having the subtitles running on the video, having it appealing so as, as people scroll through, it jumps out at them and makes them want to click into it and then watch the rest of the video and keep them engaged for the full 10 minutes. So for me, video is massively, massively important going forward. It's actually quite refreshing hearing somebody like yourself who's not actually immersed in the, the, the video world and actually tapping into the importance of it as well. Because as much as I love promoting uh, how powerful video is, hearing it from somebody else who's not actually in my world uh, is absolutely great. And hopefully more people will then uh, tap into the power of video and invest um, into themselves and into their, uh, their, their businesses to actually get their message out there. So um, yeah, it's absolutely great to hear. Why do you do what you do? What's so great about being a business coach? Um, and what, what do you actually get from it? Because as we all know, we, we all love what we do, else we wouldn't do it in the first place. So what is the, uh, what is the one thing that gets you out of bed in the morning and makes you really, really um, embrace being a business coach? It's been the agents of change. I, I, I've run businesses before. I've been involved in businesses before. Um, I remember very clearly uh, a conversation in one business where it's like we're, we've, we've expanded the business, we've grown the business, and there was this conversation, right, what are we going to do next? What I want to do next is. And I remember the, other, the, other, the rest of the board saying, it's finished. It works. I said, no, 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 we've got to change. And at that point, you know, I was told, it's time for you to go away, and it's time for you to go away and, and change something else. And for me, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's why it's transformational. It's about change. It's about making change. It's about moving things forward, moving things up a gear, moving up the next plateau, moving up the next level, whatever that is. But that's really what fires me up. It's actually being able to show people how they can move up the next level, how, how we can upgrade ourselves. And it's that, that personal interaction for me. I mean, it's not, it's not about the business. It's really not about the business. It's about the people. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. If anybody wants to find out about more about you and uh, about how you can help them, where should they go? Just head over to the internet, uh, Ian Strachan at actioncoach.com. Quick search on there and I'll pop up, no problem at all. So is there, is there any up and coming events which you'd like to promote, which you're either uh, going to be visiting or obviously hosting yourself? Yeah, for sure. So I've been asking around the business community what it is that they want at the moment as we're coming out of, uh, out of the COVID time. Um, and really business growth seems to be the one area. So um, on the 5th of August at the Queen's Hotel in Leeds, I'm, I'm running the Five Ways Seminar, which is a, a workshop where business owners can come along and we look at really how to grow a business. What, what, what five simple ways there are to grow a business. And we like that breaking down into marginal gains. Um, obviously, there's a whole lot of mindset stuff behind that. And the other area which was really coming up um, was the issues of team. It's about how to get the whole team on board. And that's a great area for me. So uh, in September, I'm running another one at Queen's Hotel again. That's about actually getting the team, how we get a team to work, to how we really get people to gel together and pull together. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's events running all year long. Every six weeks, I've got something which is just a free event for the local business owners and just something I put out there for the business community because this is all about a community. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Ian Strachan. Uh, thank you very much indeed for being the first guest on Getting to Know More About. Thank you. Privilege, Mark. Thank you very much indeed.